interactions with veterinary students and clinicians, I've come to realize that facultative anaerobes are often a point of confusion. So over the next few minutes, I will explain what a facultative anaerobe is and how they can affect our diagnostic test procedures in hopes of helping you to choose the correct test when submitting samples to the diagnostic lab. So what is a facultative anaerobe? It is an organism that can tolerate anaerobic conditions, though it prefers to grow in an oxygen-containing environment. My concern is that clinicians sometimes order anaerobic culture when their primary differential is a facultative anaerobe. Let me explain why this is a problem. For both aerobic and anaerobic culture, clinical specimens are inoculated onto the appropriate medium and then held in an incubator with the correct atmospheric conditions at least overnight. For aerobic culture, when growth is observed after an overnight incubation, the identification procedures can begin. But for an anaerobic culture, when we see growth, we must then determine if the organism is indeed an anaerobe. Each colony type observed is subcultured to an additional plate that is then incubated in aerobic conditions. If we see growth on that plate, those organisms are not anaerobes. They are in fact facultative anaerobes and will not undergo further testing. Let's review. Your primary differential is a facultative anaerobe. What test do you request in the bacteriology lab? That's correct. The answer is aerobic culture. And that's because a facultative anaerobe is not an anaerobe. If you have any questions about sample submission and test requests, I encourage you to contact your friendly microbiologist. Thanks for watching.